Hi guys. Um, I'm going to start this vlog with a bit of a rant. I'd rather get the uh, crappy part out of the way first. <laughs> well, it's kind of a rant. Um, basically, my friend, whose arse you can see in the picture here, <laughs> um, was asked by the boss of a local charity, um, Robert Scammell, uh, he basically, his charities raise money for Katali in Africa to buy, to buy materials to build schools and wells and things over there. Anyway, my friend here was asked by Robert to um, cut this grass, because as you can see it is pretty tall. That's a, pardon me, that's a six foot wooden fence in the background there. So it gives you some idea how tall that. I think a hair just got in the mouth. There. Yeah, give you some idea how tall that grass has gotten. Um, but the thing is, grass areas like this in public areas is actually the responsibility of the North Norfolk District Council's highway, Highways Department. And they have contractors that are supposed to go around cutting these public areas. But as you can see, they've been neglecting it this year, which makes me wonder what the hell we pay council tax for. <laughs> Absolutely fuck bleed and all from the looks of it. Anyway, <laughs> um, it's not just in my town of North Walsham that this has happened in. I've noticed it in other towns and villages. Um, I'm on another Facebook group which is dedicated to Cromer, which is my other favourite North Norfolk town. I spent a year living in that town, over a year living in that town actually, when I was in the um, Hostel for Adults. Um, uh, I might go into that story another day how we ended up in there, but nothing that was my fault. Um, I just didn't have a lot of choice. That was my only option at the time, unless I wanted to um, wander and live on the streets, so... But yeah, going on the streets wouldn't have been my fault. That was actually my brothers, who I was staying with at the time, but... That's ancient history, so... You know... Well, that's irrelevant, so... Anyway... A lot of people have taken it upon themselves to um, cut a lot of the public areas like this. Um... We did have a guy claiming to work for the council. Now I say claiming because he didn't actually provide any actual identification apart from the coat he was wearing, which had the, um, I can't remember if it was Norfolk County Council or North Norfolk District Council on it. Because um, I wasn't really paying attention because he was just basically, well, to me he was just complaining that we shouldn't have done it, you know, it was all down, you know, it's up. It's the council's responsibility, which is fair, it is. But well, then I thought, well, if you work for the council, tell the council to pull their fucking fingers out and do this job then. Because all this grass, it wasn't just grass here. We found drinks cans, beer cans, beer bottles, even a pint glass. Dog shit from here to Timbuktu in this grass. And um, on this group, Regenerate North Walsham, Actually, I think it was on the Town Council um, Facebook group as well. Parents had said they'd had ki their kids, you know, walking along here, and they trip, and they've fallen in here and landed in dog shit and whatnot, and they've stepped in it themselves, and it did stink along here as well. Um, and despite complaints to the council, it was still there. So, again, we took it upon ourselves to, to um, come along and tidy it up. Um, but it just pisses me off, because I've lived in the town 30 years. I was born and bred in this town, and this is the first time I have known public grass areas in this area to get, or to be allowed, to get into this eyesore state. Now, 
this is where the council can be hypocritical. Because if that was your personal garden and someone made a complaint, the council would make you cut your grass. But it seems it's perfectly okay for the council to do this. To allow their grass to get into this state. I'm not sure whose fault it actually is, because some people are blaming Kia, their um, contractors, and some people are blaming North Norfolk District Council, because I've heard that the District Council contracted Kia to cut this grass and all the other grass verges in the area once every two months. And, uh, well, as you can see... <laughs> That's nowhere near enough. That needs to be at least every couple of weeks. At least every two weeks. Once a week would be better, but at the very least, I'd have said two weeks. Just to keep it at a decent, manageable length. Because, um... With the British climate being, uh, especially in this time of year, especially with the weather we've had lately, where we've had a good mix of rain and sunshine, a lot of wild plant life and grass like this is growing at a rate of knots. So um, it does need to be kept up with, because there could have been all sorts in there, hidden in there. A chunk of rusty metal for someone to fall onto, which is the other reason we were using... Um, my friend's bike trailer to, uh, well, he, while he was going down this half with the brush car, which is basically a weed eater with a metal blade on it, I was rolling down here with his big ass bike trailer, which is basically a metal, metal bed frame, the old angle iron bed frames, um, with high sides, that's what he was using for this job, and I was using that basically as a shield to stop anything flying from here out into the road and getting pedestrians and whatever else. Um, you know, even though he's got public liability insurance, you know, if you could lower the risk and avoid it, then you should. Which is why I know a lot of people would do this, you know, at the... I've actually known Chroma that some people have actually gone and done it voluntarily. I don't know if any of them have got public liability insurance, but... I wouldn't recommend it unless you have, just in case a stone, a piece of glass or whatever come flying out here and, you know, there's a car there that had just passed us, you know, anything could have flown up and hit the car. And the last thing you want is to um, get into trouble. You know, it's even worse if you haven't got the public liability insurance. <laughs> A hair or something right in front of my mouth. to someone on here. A uh, TT race would cost hundreds of thousands. Our council can't even afford to maintain a car park or cut the grass. So I've just put our council as in the town council, because the grass isn't the town council's responsibility, nor is the car parks. But instead of said that, say that, I thought I'd um, just clarify what she was on about first. Because she might be on about the NNDC, I don't know. away from that and go on to something positive. Um, I've been down and sorted all the car boot stuff out in the shed. Um, I've managed to get rid of two boxes by um, packing stuff properly in all the other boxes and 
because most of them were half full really so I managed to get rid of two, three boxes four I think if I count this one that's up here um, it's full of these little sort of decorative bows that you'd put on birthday gifts, Christmas gifts, whatever you want to put them on they're not just um, like the Christmas presents you could use these bows on, well, whatever gift you wanted really um, and someone had started putting them into these bags because I found a couple of bags already done and I found a pile of bags as well so what I've done I've got a bag of silver bags are mixed bags of gold, bags of red you get the picture um, and what I was doing, I was doing two of those, two of those, two of those, two red, and then I'd start again with another two of those, two of those, and so forth until I'd run out of bags, and um, I've now run out of bags. But I figured it would be easier to like sell them on a car boot or something like that, for I don't know what, 50p? I was actually thinking one pound, but... I think 50p will do for those, and I've still got all this lot left. I'm going to put those in a carrier bag, though, because I want the tub. <laughs> There's a few more down there as well. Um, some larger ones. There's some different ones in here as well. Look, a little yellow one. A purpley one. I suppose I could go through this and see if I can locate one more bag and make a mixed one. Pink one. <laughs> As I keep finding these old ones in here. So I could just do a... I could find enough for a bag full and I might actually open one of those up down there and chuck those in. If I can find enough. There's another one. <clears throat> Green one. So I've had quite a busy day. I'm going to Mum's tomorrow. She, um, I'll ask her when I next see her online. Is she online? Oh, she's gone offline again. I don't know if her net is being crap tonight or what it is. But she keep disappearing offline. And, well, I assume she's still picking me up in the morning. She hasn't said no more. I hope so. I want to go over. Um... See if Biggle still wants me to uh, strip out all his, um, well, what he's got left of bikes in the um, back room and lean to on his workshop. So he's sort of, where he's been collecting all the bikes that he gets from down the dump, he hasn't finished stripping any of them out, so he's got like a huge pile of them out in the back. Um, but I suppose he hasn't bothered because um, he's got a hernia that's been plowing up but uh, he won't go in a hospital to have a sword well apparently he has and he's been prioritised for an operation um, I think he's more worried about his, um, who's going to look after his dogs and anything but the only thing that worries me is if that hernia bursts it can kill him um, and I know mum and my stepdad wouldn't mind looking after the dogs and taking them for a walk um, while you know he recovers from the op and whatnot. They'll take him to the hospital. They'll bring him back. Then you know he hasn't got to worry about that. He hasn't got to drive. Although no operation. Well, apparently the operation for a hernia is simple. They just push all your organs back through your ab abdominal wall put a piece of gauze over the hole to prevent it coming back out and then I suppose they stitch your abdominal wall back together and in time it will heal but it does mean he can't bend up as much as he would like to to um, do these bikes He's been sitting in his workshop a lot lately, cleaning up all the parts he has got to list them on eBay. I wouldn't say he'd make a killing doing that, you know, it's not... 
with the heavy metal around them. That's quite scary. <laughs> Sounds like dogs lead. Hope someone's walking past with a dog. Anyway. Um completely lost track of things now. <laughs> oh yeah, I did uh Half inch a couple of other dinky little bits. Got this sort of folder thing here for paperwork. So I take the paperwork out of my ring binder, which is up there on the um, cupboard. I can hear voices, and I don't want them to be round back. I've got a lot of stuff round back at the moment. Anyway, yeah, I can take all the paperwork out of that ring binder, put in this, and uh, I can then put all my Lego instructions in said ring binder, or as many as I can. So, uh, I don't mum and my stepdad would mind me calling more than that. Uh, there's a basket thing somewhere as well, I think mum will probably want that. Well, some records. Yeah, there's that basket thing. It's a folding basket. There's some more of them decorative stones, a few more DVDs, and a packet of um, packet of um, hearing aid batteries. I'm sure I can find a use for those. Hearing aid batteries are cheap enough to buy in the shops anyway, so I don't really see the point in putting those on a car boot. Um. So, yeah, been quite a productive day, I suppose. Fixed the puncture in the bike I used to turn my trailer. Um, because I helped my friend cut that grass today, he's let me have another bike I wanted, which is good. <laughs> For the amount of work I did, he said it was at least worth the value of that bike, so that's good. Mum, if she's still coming in the morning. And if so, do you want to take some of the budge? Some of the car boot gear. running. It wasn't, wasn't, that's, that's typical Norfolk there, wasn't, not wasn't, wasn't. Uh, <laughs> no, I've completely forgot what I wanted to say now. <laughs> oh well. Oh, she's replied. Yep, yeah, she said she'll take some of that car boot stuff as well. Um, it's going to be me and my sister in the car, so we're not going to get much in the back, but I'll get me some out of the way. Oh, forgot to tell my mate, um, my mate wants some, some bits that are there, so I've got to keep those aside. Apart from that, that's good, that. We've sold some stuff without even going to the car boot. <laughs> what he bought now. I think that's about four or five small cuddly toys. A very large Winnie the Pooh cuddly bear. A weed sprayer thing. You fill it with like weed killer and pump it up for air pressure then you pull the trigger and you can spray all your weeds with weed killer. Someone's actually filled it with um, that wood preserving paint for fences and sheds and I've been using it for that but as I said to my friend, you know, you fill it with a bit of white spirit and flush it through and clean it out. I'll soon clean out the inside, then he could use it for his uh, 
weed killer for his gardening business. That's what he wanted it for, so... <laughs> I can't see my stepdad leave or have any use for anything like that, so... That doesn't mean I've got to be up early. Uh, I don't want to get up early. I don't like getting up early. Oh well. Oh. Oops, my chair's moving while I'm kneeling on it. Um, I actually had a police officer from Cromer Police Station call me the other day. I found the message on my um, answer phone. It's something about regarding an issue, but it's not important or nothing to worry about. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> He hasn't run back, so it couldn't have been that important. It's got a no tick that clock. Tick tock, tick tock. Anyway, well, I didn't get to put those on eBay. I've got tied up with other things. I've got bits of grass still in my hair, and it's getting too late for a shower now. Um. Okay, there's a metal gate across the car park there, I'm not sure if you can see it. It's right underneath that street light, street light in view. But there's something white sitting right at the bottom of the post, I'm not sure what it is. I'm really not sure what that is. It looks like a carrier bag of something. Someone's probably been a dirty bugger and dropped their litter. I don't know why, because there's a fucking bin around the corner. It pisses me off when people do that. I don't know. Mum's always brought me up to take my litter home with me or keep hold of it till we come across a bin. So that's what I've always done. So it does tick me off when um, knobs tend to litter like that, especially when there's a bin nearby. daughter this morning who is three years old to the park on Acorn Road. This is a lovely park and we use it regularly but I was horrified today when my daughter ran to the swings only to run over a smashed bottle of wine which was around the swings themselves. It took me over 15 men to hand pick as many shards and pieces of glass as I could to make it safe. Well, I know people like to drink on that like that, but that is actually fucking ridiculous that people would do that. Oh god, mum's commented on that post, what's she bloody written? Oh dear. Oh. Missed the enter key. Oh, um. Well, I won't get a lot done tomorrow either, will I? Because I'm not going to be here. <laughs> well, as you can see, I've got really far with doing the scooter. That was going to be this evening's plan, but I uh, got the phone call from a friend, so I sort of threw a spanner in the works for that, for the time being. But, uh, other than that, well, originally he rung me just wanting to borrow my, um, men at work sign and a cone, just to, um, warn people coming up that, you know, there's men working there. Um, 
know some people when they vlog they put the camera on themselves but I just feel it would be more interesting to um, look around the room rather than at my mug you can see my mug any time you'll probably see my naked belly in the reflection there so it's quite a warm night um, probably because the wind has dropped. We did have a bit of a wind this morning. But, um, that was just grass. I thought I had dog crap on my shoes. I wouldn't be surprised after doing that grass. Hey look, it's gone dark. Now it's got, got light again. Sort the bed sheet out. Well, actually, there's no point in sorting the bed sheet out because I've got a brand new one through there. Stick on. When I get chance, of course. Don't tell me you want feeding again. I actually had to chuck some of his food that was left in the dish in the bin because the friggin' flies had been on there and laid their fucking eggs on there. Well, I hate flies. Pain in the friggin' ass. What are you doing? <laughs> My little boy. Hmm. I wonder if Nobby Nuts has paid for my or for that uh, speedometer yet. Probably not. Easiest way to know is just to check the emails because I'll get an email notification. <laughs> nope. Just a note email from Netflix notifying me that I changed my plan. I know, because I fucking changed it. Duh. Andrew, we'd like to hear from you. Start survey. Yeah. Stop changing things. This is one of the things that really pissed me off with Facebook. Right. See this here, right? You can't see what it says, so I'll read it out. Viewing most recent stories. Right? Which, to me, that is what is more important. You know, you've got the option up here to change it between our most recent and top stories. Well, I personally prefer um, most recent stories. Because that way, I miss less posts from my friends. But, every couple of days, Facebook changes that fucking setting back to top stories. And it just pisses me off that it does that without asking me, or without, you know, notifying me. You know, if I wanted it back to top stories, I'll change the bloody setting back myself. But yeah, all bloody Facebook do. Look at this. They've changed this again. The like and comment buttons have changed style again. So they'll fix the things that don't need fixing, but the things that actually piss people off, they leave in place. You know, I want settings that will stay set unless I change them again. Not change by themselves. Anyway, <laughs> we've got rant ranting again. Oh God, I'll start to reach again. Look, octopus. Octopusy! Mm-hmm. 
Okay. Well, I'm going to end the video because there's nothing else I can. Well, it's not that I can't talk about. There just isn't anything to talk about now. You know, I could just film the cat for three minutes. <laughs> Because uh, that's when the video will automatically start, stop, and restart. Anyway, so uh, thanks for watching if you made it this far, and we'll talk to you again in the next video. Bye bye.